All right, what's up guys? This is Alex from X Trades. Back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. We had an amazing list last week actually. All the setups were pretty nice. I think there was just one that really didn't get going. That was probably Adobe puts, but the KO calls, AT&T calls, and the long-term position that I mentioned I was going to be starting did really well. Closed AT&T calls for 85% in our X Trades Discord. And I'm holding shares for the long term, intending on collecting the dividend. There was also MU Micron. They did pretty good. They had a breakout. It was not able to reject the downtrend. So we're looking at calls or puts on both of those. Uh, the puts were not able to confirm a 30 minute close under the level we we're looking at. So it ended up breaking out of the downtrend and actually gave a setup for calls. So that did pretty good as well. And then lastly, SMH, the semiconductor ETF, finally broke down the level on Friday, at, or maybe it was Thursday, Thursday and Friday both kind of had a red day, but it was able to break under that level and the puts worked out pretty good. Just took a couple days and there was a little bit of upside. So you just had to wait for that level to break. But hopefully this week we'll have another good list and we'll have some good setups. Just like last week, I had a really good week personally, probably one of my best in a couple months. So that was really nice to have a steady equity curve this week and just overall be able to give you guys quality setup. So this week, hopefully it goes well. We do have the FOMC meeting this week, but we'll go over uh, the economic calendar here. So this week, Monday, July the 24th, we do have the S&P Flash US Manufacturing PMIs and also the S&P Flash US Services PMIs. So this could definitely move the market. This is a pretty good data set. It just depends on how extreme the reading is. Tuesday, July 25th, we have the S&P Case-Shiller Price home price index and also consumer confidence i wouldn't say that this one's really going to do much but the consumer confidence can definitely move the market wednesday the most important day of the week we do have new home sales also the fomc decision on interest rate policy and also fed chair jerome powell also has a press conference that's at 2 30 as usual so this is definitely going to be really volatile. I believe there's a 99% chance they're going to raise 25 basis points. According to the Fed futures, and usually Jerome Powell does not shy away from the Fed futures. So we could be seeing a little rate hike coming up. But honestly, with the last CPI print, I feel like they could pause and they'd probably be good because policy does have a lag effect and it takes a while to catch up. And I believe the CPI... It's already down to 3%, so their goal is 2%, and I mean, they're really close. So uh, honestly, I feel like they could pause probably, and inflation would keep coming down. According to their data, it's coming down so fast. So, But, you know, you never know. We'll have to see what they're thinking, and we'll get all of that on Wednesday. So it's probably pretty important not to swing any big positions through this, honestly, just because it's so volatile and random. If you were to, you'd probably just want to stick to your long-term positions. Obviously, you're probably not going to be selling those for a really long time, such as myself. I'm not going to be selling my long-term positions unless there was, you know, a, a very good reason, like, you know, cutting a dividend or like a real economic disaster. So, and honestly, even through that, I probably wouldn't sell because the market usually bounces back. So, you know, just be smart, make sure you have time on contracts if you're playing options. And yeah, just be careful swinging through stuff like this. It's crazy. The implied volatility gets high. And overall, it's just very random. So you just never know how it's going to go. I wish there was a way to project where it would go during an FOMC meeting, but it's like literally impossible. You know, you could take an educated guess and usually the market tries to be, you know, two or three steps ahead and always pricing in the market to current conditions. So, you know, some people will argue everything's already priced in. So the market's already ahead of the 0.25 basis point hike. You know, you just got to be careful with that. So, and then Thursday, July 27th, our usual initial jobless claims. We have durable goods orders. Also the GDP report. It looks like we have advanced retail inventories and also advanced wholesale inventories and then pending home sales. So this is a pretty good data stack day. I would say the ones I just read off are probably ones that can definitely move the market. It just depends. And I feel like there's going to be a lot for the market to digest here. So, you know, we could see some movement. And then also it's the day after the FOMC. So it's likely going to, you know, be a digestion day anyways for the FOMC decision. So FOMC decision can probably just, you know, overweigh all of this right here. And people are just going to be trying to price in what the Fed said during the press conference. And then Friday, July 28th, we do have personal income, personal spending, and then the PCE index as well, core PCE, PCE year over year, and core PCE year over year. And this is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. They prefer this over the CPI. If you watched my videos before, I've pretty much repeated that a couple of different times. 
and they've made it known that they prefer the PCE over the CPI. So this is a pretty important reading. It does come after the CPI, so it kind of like loses some magic because we already got the CPI print, but it, it does move the market a little bit. I would say anywhere from you know half a percent to 1%, it can move the SPY. But you know, like I said, it just depends on how extreme the reading is. And then we do have another consumer sentiment on Friday, which is mid-session. So this comes after the bell rings at the open and can cause some mid-session volatility. So that's for the data. Pretty stacked week. I would say a lot of these have a potential to move the market, but most importantly, Wednesday, July 26th, FOMC decision, and also the press conference. So it's going to be a big day. And then we do have another addition today because we are going into a very earnings stacked week. So this is just adding more insanity to this week. So this week can be extremely volatile, along with the NASDAQ rebalancing some of its weighting and some of the you know, biggest big tech stocks that they have large weight into on the ETFs, they are starting to rebalance that. I'm not sure what stocks they're doing, but they are taking down some of the big ones, like taking some of the weight off. So they are lowering the weight percent on like Microsoft, I think like Tesla, and maybe a couple of others. I'd probably have to go back and look, but they are doing a rebalance on some of the big tech stocks. So they are probably going to be selling some of that and that can cause volatility, along with it being the week after the monthly options expiration. Um, usually there's some weakness after the, after that anyways. So I would say that, you know, this rebalance with the NASDAQ and the ETFs can just, you know, cause some additional volatility along with the OPEX weakness because people are rebalancing their portfolios. Trillions of dollars just expired. So kind of makes the week after a little bit weak because people are are rebalancing their portfolio after such a big expiration. But for earnings this week, you can see we got Domino's Pizza. We have Cleveland Cliffs. This is a nice steel ticker to trade. AGNC, it's a pretty nice REIT. I've actually invested in this company before, a very long time ago. We have Verizon, 3M, GE, General Electric, Spotify, Raytheon Technologies, Texas Instruments, Teladoc. This is a high growth company. Uh, Kathy Wood really likes this one. We got Visa, we got Snap. Alphabet, Google, and Microsoft. So Tuesday is going to be pretty huge. And then AT&T. So this should be interesting after AT&T has just been, been getting slammed to finally have that dead cat bounce. We'll have to see how this goes. AT&T does have a lot of debt and with high interest rates, that does make it a little bit riskier. People want to see that, you know, they're still holding on to their dividend. They're still going to pay shareholders. And yeah, hopefully we get some good news on that. We have Boeing, we have Coca-Cola. We had this in the list last week, had a really nice pre-earnings run up, calls paid well. Tilray, if you like pot stocks, we got eBay, QuantumScape, Chipotle, Meta. So we got Google, Meta, and Microsoft. So that's some of the big, big seven, some of the biggest tech stocks. We also have RCL, so cruise ships. We got McDonald's. This is a really nice value name. This one is just great and recession proof. We have LUV, so some of the airlines. We got MasterCard, Crocs. We got Enphase Energy. You got Ford, Intel, Roku, T-Mobile. Then Friday, it looks like we're getting some of the big energy names. So we got Exxon Mobil. You got Chevron. So you could just see, I mean, it's just uh, very stacked. It's almost like all of America is reporting next week. And then we have, you know, the FOMC meeting too. So it's going to be very stacked. So it's just to stay in our pivot and make sure we're not, you know, oversizing and taking too much dumb risk until, you know, maybe some of it blows over and there's a little bit more of a clear path for us to follow. All right. And now that we've gone over all of that, we went over the economic calendar and some of the big earnings, which is just very stacked. We're we'll going to get into some of the setups we have. I only have three for this week. Last week we had five, but I could really only find three that I actually truly liked. And a lot, of, I did find some others, but they're reporting earnings. So your technical analysis going into earnings can just be completely blown out of the water and it could not matter. So it's just good not to trade options and swing into earnings unless you, you know, you got money you're willing to lose or you just buy really further out expiration and you deal with the volatility. So the first one here, we're looking at Nike. I really like how it's finally poking out of this little downtrend. I would like to see a little bit more confirmation though, maybe one more bar uh, closing, maybe like above 110 or something showing that it's finally breaking out. Uh, the price target's pretty obvious. There's really a, only a supply up here, to, you know, around 114 or so, uh, maybe like 115. And you can see that the slow stochastic also still crossed that positive, no negative crossover yet. So momentum is holding positive. But I would like to see it definitely close outside of the downtrend line, maybe one more time or so. And this could be a great breakout trade to the upside. So I'm going to be looking at calls on Nike as long as we get a, a good signal. 
Want to see a one day bar closing outside of this? Just one more, maybe. If you want to be a little bit more sure, you wait for it to get over this 110.34 short term resistance, and you can even right click, hit add alert, and we can just name it breakout. So once it gets over that 110.34, that's a pretty good signal that it's probably going to start feeling this little sell inbounds area and just head straight into supply. So pretty good setup. But like I said, it's kind of close to the downtrend line still. So I want to see a little bit of a better signal that it's breaking out of this downtrend line. So Nike here looking at calls. All right. And next we're going into Netflix. So they actually reported earnings last week. Huge gap down, closed down almost 9% after their earnings report. So the subscribers are actually really good. So they added a lots of new subscribers, but I believe that their revenue really wasn't all of that. And people kind of, you know, raise their eyebrow with that. How do you get all these new subscribers, but your revenue was kind of mid. So that could be why it sold off. You know, it could just be people taking profits as well. I mean, it had a great run up already, but me, when I'm looking at longs, I like to see discounts. So now that I see that it sold off a little bit, it's pulling into this nice demand zone. This is a previous, looks like a pretty much like a rally base rally demand zone. It bounced off here prior. And now it's back to it again. So I'm going to be looking for a little call scalps on this. I don't think I'm going to open a swing trade on it just because I don't know. I don't really like the structure here. I mean, if it bounces up, this could just turn into like a shoulder and it can make, you know, like a little ugly head and shoulders. So I need to see it maybe entering the gap. And then I'd be willing to take a couple day swing trade to fill the gap. But buying down here while it could, you know, run right into 448 and make a shoulder. I feel like I wouldn't really like the risk to reward on that. So I probably won't swing this, but I do like this for day trades. So as long as this little demand zone's holding up, you know, we can trade off of it. And I feel like it's a pretty good demand zone. I mean, it's already had one good bounce from it. So let's see if it can hold up here. I'm going to be looking at calls on this. Obviously risk off and it just goes totally void. If, probably if it goes under 410 um maybe even this little 41150 which is this little wick low right here the demand zone low is precisely 41476 so you could use that as well but i feel like this wick low would be pretty good because if it bounced to this wick low it could hold up right there so we'll just call it 41150 as the risk off area probably wouldn't be looking at any long trades if it broke that unless i want to close back over it reclaim it you know give a nice little bullish candle something showing us that the support or the demand zone is still holding the lows so i feel like there's a good chance you know like i said it could just hold up this general area maybe we'll see some quick bounces right off the demand zone it's usually how it goes but like i said it just depends so we'll have to see how it opens on monday when it closes red like this there's a good chance you'll see that continuation on monday so you might see a dip into monday and maybe people are trying to buy back up into tuesday but it just depends so we'll see how that goes. Just keep an eye on the demand zone and maybe be willing to scoop up some calls for a scalp or some type of day trade. And then you, you know, you can be flat by end of day and then risk off under 411.50. So Netflix here looking at calls. All right. And we got another big tech name here. So we're going to be looking at NVIDIA. The reason for that is because it finally dipped. Now that it finally dipped, it's actually pulling into this 439.90 backtest area. You can see it right here. So this is the 439.90 backtest. It's a previous resistance. And you can see it's just pulling in for a classic, you know, breakout retest. And it could try to hold up here. Another thing you have is a test one. You got a test two, test three, test four. Uh, it looks like the trend line is coming up for a test five. So there's a good chance that this could still hold up. I know this drop is kind of sharp. So it's a little bit scary buying when it's, you know, so high up and you have this sharp of a drop but that's why you make sure that the 439.90 and the trend line is holding first before you enter another thing i did here while i was charting this out you can see the little clock down here that means i right clicked it i added an alert and i named it breakdown just in case this doesn't end up holding up like let's let's say for some reason we just gap down super heavy on monday Obviously, that would set off our trigger and, you know, that being the trend line broke. So we could probably start looking at puts at that point. But right now, it's still over the trend line. So naturally, at first, I'm going to be looking for it to hold up 439.90 plus the uptrend line. Only thing I don't like is that a closed week on Friday could just be from OPEX. It could be, you know, just people taking profits. But like I said, you know, when you have a red Friday like this, a lot of times Monday, it will continue and then people will buy it up going into Tuesday. So it's the down Friday, down Monday, buy Tuesday. It's kind of a, it's a pretty common pattern we see a lot, especially in the SPY and QQQ and just overall really with the market in general. 
So this can go two ways. Like I said, as long as we're holding up trend line and back test level, I'm going to be looking at calls on this. But at the same time, I also did set that alert just in case it was to break down and we can switch. So trading is just all about, you know, willing to adjust and markets change in seconds. So, I mean, the plan could change. You know, we'll have to see how Monday opens. We'll see if it's holding up 439.90 plus the trend line. That could give a signal to bounce back up short term. Look at a day trade on calls. I probably wouldn't swing up here just because it's, I mean, it's so high up. We're at, four, four, we're at 443 a share. Price to earnings ratio is outrageous. I'm guessing it's 200 plus. Uh, the S&P average is anywhere from 15 to 20 price to earnings ratio. So that just, you know, this is a high growth stock. It's very, quote unquote, overvalued. So you have to be careful. Um, I'm guessing insiders are probably going to want to start taking profits on this soon as well. It's had a great run up. So it'd be silly for people not to. But we do have this uptrend line in place. So we'll see if this can hold up here. Maybe we could look at some calls. If not, we'll have some insurance. If the trend line breaks, you see the little clock. We set the alert. We look at puts to the downside. So NVIDIA here, I'm willing to do either. But focusing on calls going into Monday as long as this is holding. All right. And now we'll go ahead and get into the indexes. First, we'll go ahead and look at SPY here. So last week we were focused on this rally based drop supply zone right here all the way from 2022. And we were focused on the 78.6. So I really didn't feel like it would go too much higher because the supply is in the way. And also you have the 78.6. It did get briefly over that. But now you can see it closed right, right around the 78.6. You have a nice little wick on this one week bar. So it did react to the supply and it looks like the 78.6 could still be a factor, but it would have to get back under it. Obviously this could be at, you know, 451 or so it needs to get under that, but it's reacting to the supply. Another thing we have right here, we have two little base candles for demand. So if spy does pull into this little 450 area, this, this is a one day demand zone. The big red you see over here is a one week zone. So this one day zone is a little bit more recent. So we definitely want to mark it just because it's recent and there could be fresh liquidity waiting to, you know, buy around this area. So if it does pull into the 450 20s, you get about $2 till it does that. We could probably look at, you know, call scalps to the upside. I probably wouldn't open up a new swing trade here. I would probably want to wait for it to you know, get much lower to buy a swing trade on spy for calls, maybe like 443 or so or maybe even down here, but up here, I just don't feel great about it. Just because it's still in the one week supply, but for short term, we can focus on this one day demand zone. So if it pulls into this, we could look at calls off that, maybe trade like a dollar or two to the upside and you know, call it a day. You don't even have to trade a dollar or two on spy. You can you know catch 50 cents on some zero day contracts and they'll pay you know, 20, 30%. So just all about perspective. Like I said, still inside this massive one week supply zone. So definitely not opening any swing trades up here yet. I'm going to add the moving averages. I would feel better you know, if it pulled into you know the daily nine EMA, maybe even the daily 21 EMA. And I would be willing to buy calls around there to hold for a couple of days. But up here, just not for me, especially with the supply in the way. And we're pretty overextended. So we'll just focus on this demand zone. I feel like it could dip a little bit lower. It'll be about, you know, 450s, 450.50. So $450 and 50 cents. So it'll probably be the area where we try to, you know, curl up. And that kind of meets with the daily nine EMA too. So whenever it does pull into this, or if it does pull into this, pull up your one day chart, see if it's tapping the one day nine EMA and your demand. And that could be a good area to enter, you know, a nice little 15 minute scalp or something to the upside. So I can't really put it any lower than that. Just because we have this demand zone here, it would have to get under the demand zone, uh, probably be about 448.50. If I can get under 448.50, I could put it to the next base right here, but that's about it. I can't really project it any lower until I see these get wiped out. So kind of sucks, but it uh, looks like the range could be tight with the FOMC. Obviously it'll widen up, but for Monday and Tuesday, I'm guessing that it probably won't breach this, but it just depends. We'll have to see. And then after Wednesday, I mean, anything's up for grabs. The uh, market's going to get probably going to get really wide either to the upside or downside. So, you know, these could just flush right through. I probably won't hold any, or I probably won't open any new swing trades, you know, going into FOMC, but we'll see. So just focus on this demand zone. If it comes down to 450, 52, keep an eye out for a bounce just in case. And then obviously just be careful at 452 because that's right where, you know, the one week supply zone starts. All right. And next we're going into QQQ. So last week we were focused on this one week supply right here. And you can see exactly why. I mean, it finally started reacting to it a little bit. We actually had a pretty big 
dip, I think, Thursday and Friday after Netflix and Tesla earnings. It brought down uh, the NASDAQ pretty well. But I was pretty much skeptical in this area. I definitely said I wasn't going to be looking at calls inside of here. I think I did scalp some QQQ calls last week uh, for a day trade. But obviously, I only hold those, you know, 10, 15 minutes or something. So and I think it worked out pretty good. And I think I did some puts as well. So I had a pretty good week last week trading the QQQ as well, along with some other stuff. As long as the Camarilla pivots look good, I'm willing to still buy the dip at S3 or trade at R4 breakout, even if it's inside supply. So it just depends on intraday sentiment, how the VIX is doing, how the dollar is doing, etc. Same thing as last week. So we did close a little bit lower than our last one week bar that we were looking at. I uh, didn't take out the week's, week's lows or anything. So I don't think that's, you know, like a huge signal, but it's a start. So it did start to react to the supply. That's about the only signal we have right now in the one week is this little potential reversal candle. On the one week, it looks like you have the slow stochastics starting to cross over a little bit. You can see the purple low line going over the orange. That means it's starting to cross to the downside. So it could be a little sign of momentum slowing but we'll go down to the one day right now it's easier to uh kind of project short-term moves or look for you know stuff for day trading the one week's more for you know swing trading and you know, more medium and long-term projections and ideas so it looks like qqq does have this previous resistance it's gonna be at 372.85 this is definitely a big level of focus so definitely keep an eye on this because it could just pull back into this and i'll probably try to curl up about there or at least try to bounce off of it. So even if it, you know, ends up flushing through, there's a good chance it probably will try to try to hold up here at least as a classic, you know, break, breakout, retest, and try to bounce about there. The only thing you do have looming over you, like I said, is the one week supply. So we're conscious of that going into last week when I dropped the last video for a good reason too. Because look, I mean, it got almost all the way up to the supply high. So it had a good start. We opened here on Monday, had a nice two-day run, and then just, you know, totally shit the bed. So you just have to be really conscious of these one-week supply zones, even if, you know, maybe you end up wrong. They just blast all the way through. It doesn't matter. But the fact that you were cautious and you were aware of it can save you some money going into the future. And that would have done that for you right here for last week. So just keep an eye on the 372.85. Pull is into that. You could try to look for a call scalp of that maybe. And then obviously, if it breaks under the 372.85, that'll probably take you down to demand right here. That's going to be pretty low, you know, around, you know, the 360s, 362 or so, maybe even this little wick low at 363.40s. And then it looks like there's some small gaps here as well. You can kind of see them. They're pretty small. It's nothing crazy, but we do want to keep an eye on those. We can even mark them. I think I just removed them earlier because they make the one week chart look ugly. So there's one gap right there and there's a little gap right here as well so it's just a little bit small so it looks like it could feel down a little bit and then maybe i'll try to you know bounce off the 372.85 hold up there short term you know before trying to break it at least so just keep the 372.85 as your main level of focus and then obviously you know be conscious of the gaps uh your one week supply which we're still inside of briefly and then you do have a major demand zone down here from where we bounced prior but most importantly just a 372.85 look for a bounce on that maybe if it pulls down a little bit and that could be a good area to buy the dip so we'll keep an eye on that we can even set an alert there just in case and we can just call it support even though it's not a support yet it could be a support so we'll just call it support hit create all right and that's for qqq just watch the 372.85 and be aware of the gaps and supply zone all right next we're going into iwm which just finally just had a massive run it's actually able to break out the 189.24 so it briefly closed over briefly closed over uh 192 on friday and then I was looking for it to actually pull back into this previous resistance. It didn't even get all the way down there. It actually just held up, but it made a higher high right here. So this is actually a new rally based rally demand zone. And then if you zoom out right here, this is actually a rally based drop supply zone. And this is exactly why you see these little resistance areas right here. So you got two red candles off of this rally based drop supply. But we do have a new fresh demand zone. So if I can pull into this, I would look for IWM to try to hold up about there. So it looks like the SPY, QQQ, and IWM are all very close to key levels. They just need a dip a little bit lower. And then you can, you know, maybe look at trying to buy the dip, at least for scalps or something. You don't have to, you know, enter swing trades or anything because I know the market's a little bit extended. You may not 
you know, think this is the best risk to reward. So maybe just keep it short term, but you will have to wait for it to dip a little bit on all three. So SPY was just a little bit above a level. QQQ was just a little bit above a one day level. And then IWM is just a little bit above this one day demand. So you might want to wait for it to dip just a little bit and you can look to buy the dip around there. But it's a nice rally based rally zone. So you got a really nice rally here, makes the base higher highs. So confirmed after this little candle right here. And then with demand zones, you just wait for them to return and you try to buy about there. So it's kind of the same plan as last week, except there's a demand zone instead of previous resistance. And last week we didn't even get into the previous resistance. So it didn't hit, you know, even really that close for me to want to buy last week, unfortunately. So wasn't able to trade it and it really didn't follow the plan. But I mean, it's not always going to do that. So you're not always going to get your perfect resistance as a back test. So you might have to, you know, look for the general area, uh, pay attention to other things as well. But like I said, all three indexes by QQQ and IWM just briefly over some major levels, some key levels, at least for the short term that you can try to buy the dip at. But I would just wait for them to get down there. Otherwise, maybe just, you know, sit on your hands. And obviously, just shortly above that, if it were to bounce off this, it does go straight into supply at about 196, upper 195s. So you want to be conscious of that. So that's for the IWM. Just wait for it to dip a little bit, maybe, and you could look at, you know, bounces off this demand zone. And next, we're going into the VIX, which pretty much just closed a little bit higher where we closed last Friday. Uh, it was not able to get over this 2021 low at 1410. It wasn't able to really do anything. If I add some moving averages here, it tried to briefly get over the 21 EMA. So this is that yellow line. You can see it popped over it, got up to 1420 or, or so, and then closed back under. So we do want it to get over the 21 EMA to start seeing that short term signal for it to start heading back up to 1553. So I would just keep an eye on that wait for a moving average signal and then you know maybe you could look at some vix calls or you know look at spy puts if it can close over the you know daily 21 because it's been respecting the daily 21 pretty well you got a rejection of the general area here you got another rejection right here uh and then look once it got over the 21 here major pop even got some volatility these two days when it got over so the 21 ema is a good area to keep an eye on uh, on the one day time frame so just keep an eye on that that's about all I got for it this week. I mean, it's still holding over 1273. So it's still over, you know, the recent lows, which means it could, you know, just base out down here and try to pop. You can see the slow stochastic has actually crossed positive. So that's interesting. It's probably from these two green days we had. And then we just had a red day on Friday for the VIX. But like I said, just wait for it to get over the daily 21 EMA. But you want to see a one day close over that before, you know, just blindly following a signal. So we want to see a close over the daily 21 EMA. And that could take you up to 1553, maybe even this daily 50 EMA. So just use the one day uh, EMAs. They're working pretty good for the VIX, at least for signals and short term signals. Right now it's rejecting. So there's a good chance, you know, eventually over time, it's probably just going to head back into the lows as long as it's trending under the 9 and 21 EMA combo. So keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on the slow stochastic, which is positive right now. So that could be a little early warning sign but otherwise there's really no signals here just holding supports trending under the emas need to see a little bit more from it all right and lastly we're going into the dxy so last week we were actually focused on a one week demand zone on this i felt that that was the maximum low it would go to it actually didn't even get down there so this is the friday candle we only dipped to the friday low on tuesday it looks like so it was right at you know 99.59 or so so the maximum I had it down to if it dipped was this demand zone low and I would set it to look for a bounce there if it got down there. At the same time, we were looking at the one day chart and I said it looked very oversold. So there's a you know a good chance that you'd see a, a dead cat bounce as well as the slow stochastic had an early cross signal and look what it did. It just straight ripped back up and that could be uh, due to the earnings, especially on Thursday, which the market just sold off pretty heavy, at least for the NASDAQ. And I'm guessing that brought the dollar up as well. But now that's actually reclaimed over the 182, which is basically the most important support of the year. I mean, it was, it was pretty much our structure hold and it broke it very briefly and now back over it. So as long as this 182 area is holding up as support, I feel like it could bounce back up and, you know, head into 102 flat. If it goes back under, obviously that takes you to the most recent low. 
is right here and this is all just a straight buy imbalance so if it does go back under 182 and then 100 flat it's probably going to take you back down to 99.57 at these lows so it's all dependent on the fomc meeting currencies are very very sensitive to the federal reserve so we'll see how that goes but looking pretty good for a bounce i mean it's over the 182 now it closed over it with a one week bar and as long as it stays over that there's a good chance the dollar's going to you know bounce back up so keep an eye on that stay very frugal with that because if the dollar comes back up after breaking this uh, this this break under the 182 it could have been a great signal for the market to go higher but it was very brief and now it's right back over so you got to be careful with that if the dollar goes up high and very fast people get spooked and they start selling stocks not all the time but uh and there's times you know where the market doesn't care about the dollar but eventually it does come back out of the woodworks so you got to be careful with that so just watch 182 as long as it's holding over that i feel like the dollar could bounce back up so that's the video guys make sure you like comment and subscribe to our x trades youtube channel i love you guys i'm gonna go get this chopped up edited and sent out and i'm out